Okay, so the first thing you want to know about line four is it starts exactly the same as line three. So, just like that, right? But instead of going up here now, we're just going to repeat that C a few times, right? So the way we do this is we're going to go, and then we're going to just alternate these fingers, just like that. And then we'll play the middle finger again and go down for the A and the F, right? Okay. Just like that. So let's try this. So the beginning is, now let's run our fingers. And now let's do the middle finger again and the first finger to the F. Okay. And one more time. And then alternating and then we're going to repeat this one and then down to the F like that okay let's try that three times and then and then again now if you're getting lost on how many times rewind this and just watch a few times and listen to it and then sing it. Don't try and follow this visually. These are going by fast, but learn to go ba da dun 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 dun. Right? Okay. Alright, two more times. Okay, and again. Mm, I repeated this one, which is a different way to play it. I'm going to go back and do it the right fingering. Okay. All right. Now, the next segment, second half of line four, is probably the most difficult part. Most people think that's the hard part. And it's tricky because you have to do a shift and reach out with your pinky. But here on, on the second half of line four, you have to go one and then four. So we're gonna hit our F and then we're gonna play the E, not here, but up here on your fourth finger. Right, so E can be played there. So we have D, D sharp, E. And the reason we're doing that is so that the right hand has a logical pattern. We're gonna go Right? So the inner ones, and then the outer ones, like that. So it, this hand becomes uh, less of a problem because it stays in a pattern. And so we can play nice and smoothly and we can just focus on one hand. So we're gonna play the F. And now we're gonna get our fourth finger out on that third string, fourth fret like that. It may be the kind of thing if your hand position is not, well, if your hand position is terrible, you'll never, you'll never do it. Okay, so if your wrist is bent back or if it's too deep into the palm, this is that place we were talking about when I give you comments saying, can you fix this left hand? We want this like this. We want our fingers to be like this, sort of rolled in and the wrist to be, you know, not, not like this, but down like that to give us this architecture. And when we do this, you may have to, depending on size of your hand and the size of your ukulele, rock between these. In other words, you might have to let your first finger up a little. Let's see if we can show you from here. See, in order to get there, we could rock the hand a little bit, but not way out, okay? All right, so here we go. We go one, four, one. That's the F, E, F, right? And then after that, it's easy. Right? Okay, so you just gotta practice this with me. Let's just try the one, four, one. So F and then the E here, first finger on that string, second finger, or thumb on the third string right here. So here we go. Right? Try it again. It is possible 
that your pinky is not developed enough to do this yet. And so this is where you'll want to spend a lot of time just like that. So I know that in the video here we're going to go on, but consider spending a lot of time just going like that, right? Until it becomes natural enough, you can add those guys on, right? All right, we're going to do more than this now, slowly. So what happens is we go one, four, one, out and out on zeros, right? Now we're going to go reach up to the top notes of your position two, but then we're going to come back down and then to the F and then back to the G there. And now this thumb is going to hop down there like that. Okay, so track the notes first just on the page as I do this and then start watching my hands and then start mimicking it and then start playing it a bit on your own and then try and come up with the video. Okay, so you're going to get to know this video really well because you're going to rewind parts of it and revisit it. So here we go. One, four, one, zero, zero. Right now we keep going. Reach with your middle finger for this note, like you're going into position two, and then come back. Play the F, back out to the G, and the last note, you just play the C with your thumb. Okay? Try it again. One, four, one, zero, zero. Now the open, like you're going to position two, but then come back. and then grab the C with your thumb again, like that, okay? All right, we're gonna do this three times. Okay, second time. And the last time. Again, just because we're done here doesn't mean that you're done. You can do what you need to to practice. But this helps you know that you should play this slow. Also, you can check your technique by playing in a mirror or filming yourself and make sure it looks pretty similar, right? Again, if you're holding your instrument like this or like this or something, this is going to be very difficult. These need to be, your wrist needs to be dropped, right? have to have rounded fingers here like this so they're coming in kind of straight because the the bend up here will make them go that way okay all right here we go last time Uh, this is a little bit longer video. We're going to go on to line five, which is the last line. But it's the same exactly as line four, except there's two extra notes at the beginning and the last measure is different. So instead of just going, right, like we just did, you're going to start in this position and reverse out of it. So you're going to go, and now you're going to go, So it's exactly the same, except before you go, you're gonna start in this position and go backwards. And then go, right? And this is a great um, place to not lift your fingers very far off. Right? Okay, let's try just that part first and then we'll finish to the end of where the middle part dotted line is. So we'll go like this from the top here. 
And now we can finish this with running these fingers. And then that one again to the F. Okay, let's try it again. And one more time. Again, this is the, but we're doing it backwards to begin with, so. And then the fingers repeating there. And then, okay. All right, finally, the second half is also the same as the, as line four, where we do this one, four, one. But instead of finishing and going, we're just gonna jump back up to that C there. So we're gonna go, um, and then we're just gonna go up here and go, which is exactly like the second measure, right? It's just you have to jump there suddenly, right? So we go one, four, one, zero, zero. You see that? Now we're gonna go the second half. Jump up to the C, and then run these two fingers. And that's it. It's all it's different. Otherwise, it's the same. So the more time you spend doing, the more value you get because it's automatically between two, uh, you know, two lines identical. The more you get going. then the more value you get out of it because it applies to two lines. In fact, that will apply to the very end of the piece, well, line five as well, okay? Let's try the whole, whole of line five together three times, okay? So we're gonna start here in second position that we had, right? Okay, and we go, now we just reverse. Run these fingers. Repeat it on the A, down to the F. Now we're gonna go one, four, one. Now open, open, and open, open again. Reach, come back, down. Pop up to the C. Okay. Right now you'll notice we're not, we're using a metronome. That comes later after you have a basic grasp of how this all works and you're feeling pretty comfortable with it. Then we put a metronome on and it shows us our deficiencies and then helps us practice to fix those. But right now, don't worry, the pauses are actually important so you're not jumping and guessing and, and sort of being alarmed, right? If we get to the end of this, then you need to take a moment and go, aha. And I'll do that a little bit. I did that a little bit last time. That's right, because uh, we want you to not be nervous. We want you to say it deliberately, there it is right there, and I do these things. That's the training we're trying to get into your hands, okay? Let's do this line again. We're gonna do it two more times, here we go. Good, all right. All right, let's try it one more time. Here we go. And what happens after that? Well, the music tells us to go back to the very beginning and play to the halfway point. So we're like, um, right? And so on, 
right? But don't worry about that right now. You have five practice segments. You need to be thinking about the hand shapes again. It's open, it's here, it's there. It's there sometimes, and it's also there sometimes. And of course, it's always great to go back and practice just the hand shapes on our own. If you make a mistake on this, it's because it's too complex for you. That means it has to go slower, or if going really slow is still not working, that means that either the left hand, the basic shapes, or um, the segment's too long or something is not in place enough and you're having to focus too much on this, you need to back off and just train this part. Or if you haven't done the right hand exercises to get used to the back and forth and used to the thumb grabbing these two fingers right here or two strings right here, and these two fingers on the other two strings, except where this comes up and rotates, then you have to go back and do those. You can't skip those steps magically and expect it to come together well here. You have to train these things. So again, if it's difficult and you're having problems with some aspect of it getting turned around or messed up, just realize that's your brain and your hands telling you to go back and figure out which component still needs some work so that it's very comfortable. Never play faster than you need to to be very comfortable. So when you go, right? Don't jump up here and hope. Place your pinky up there with your hand nice and relaxed so this is gonna play the first finger on the fifth fret, like that. And then don't jump all frantic back here. Pivot your hand, put your fingers on there, and then go, right? So it's the correct in control practice that trains and grows your skills. All right, I'm so excited for you guys to get this. It'll be fun seeing you, you develop and overcome frustrations and, and have stuff come together.